Beloved brothers and sisters, welcome to the continuation of our teaching on the theme, Amazing Possibilities in God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this privilege for us to continue to hear your word. Heavenly Father, we hand over the teaching of your word. We ask that the teacher himself, our teacher, our helper, our counselor, the Holy Spirit of God, will reveal you, reveal your mind, reveal Jesus Christ through your word to us this moment. And Lord, let our lives be changed, be transformed to the perfect will of God for our life that all of us here will fulfill our purpose on earth. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, want to continue with our teaching on amazing possibilities and art to make it complete in God, not just possibilities of man, not possibilities of uh, my own possibilities. No, no, no. But our uh, the amazing possibilities available to us in God, available to all humankind who believe in God, who come to God. Glory be to God. Our text remains Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. Let's open our Bible to our text, but I believe by now everyone should be able to say this Bible portion by heart. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26, but Jesus looked at them and said to them, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. We have spent time looking at this scripture. We have done the introduction, setting the scene, all that. Ah, and I believe we all have the background to this. Amazing possibilities. It's astonishing happenings. And I decree that it will and must happen in your life and in my life in the name of Jesus Christ. If that is your portion, I want to hear you say a big amen. I say it must happen. This astonishing happenings, it must happen for you and for me. It must happen in your life and in my life in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, some people keep wishing for happenings in their lives. Even when they have become Christians, they still keep wishing for happenings, this kind of happenings. They enjoy the stories that they hear in the Bible, but they struggle to translate those stories into their own life and experience. So they keep wishing, you know, yet nothing happens. Year after year they wish, yet nothing happens. Question is why? I believe by this study, you can answer that question to this extent. The reason is because the grace is not by wishing. The grace of God is not by wishing. The grace of God comes to effect by you understanding the operation of grace by faith. You must understand the operation of grace by faith. That's number one. You must understand the operation of grace by faith. Number two, you must be willing to apply in your life. You must be willing to apply it, not by wishing, but by the doing. Wish. So you must be willing to apply the grace, apply the grace in your life. Number three, you must understand and believe the possibilities of this grace, the great possibilities. Hallelujah. Oh, brothers and sisters, and I can tell you that the grace of God is limitless. It is what? Limitless. And you know, when we talk about this grace, 
at times it, it, it could be complicated to some people. Let's just keep it simple at this point. You know, because when we say the definition of grace, we say unmerited favor. But what does it mean? What does it mean? I did uh, mention grace for salvation, grace for, you know, a different thing. But let's sum it total to the blessings and the provisions of God for man, for those who are in God, who believe in God. The blessings and the provision of God. If you keep it that simple, I believe you'll be able to relate with grace. There are the different dimensions of grace. Praise the name of the Lord. For example, the Bible says that it is the grace of God that the Son of that God gives and the rain shines upon both the wicked and the righteous. Oh, glory. Can you see that? That's a level of grace that human beings enjoy. The grace of God. Oh, the blessings and the provisions of God for man. But there is a higher calling. There is a higher level. That's what we are looking at. This is what we are in for here, brothers and sisters. So you can move from wishing, dreaming, to experiencing and testifying of the grace of God. Like Paul said, I am the least of the apostles that I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle for I persecuted the church of Jesus Christ. He said, but by the grace of God. Can somebody say with me, by the grace of God, I am what I am, hallelujah. And the grace of God upon my life was not in vain. He said, for I labor more than they all. Yet not I, but the grace. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. So brothers and sisters, this is what we want to explore. And like I said, the focus of this is so you will move from wishing to the point of experiencing and testifying. And that will be your portion. And that will continue to be our portion together in Jesus' name. So, so far we looked at Hebrews chapter 11, verses 32 through 35. Hebrews 11, 32 through 35. And there we looked at the heroes of faith as recorded in the Bible. But this heroes of faith was talking specifically about the Old Testament heroes and prophets. And I dare to say that if you throw in the heroes of the New Testament, the likes of Paul, oh, that list will expand. Glory be to God. <laughs> and so we came up with seven headlines to give us just the dimension, a, a little tip, just a few examples of these amazing possibilities. This, what this grace can do, this limitless grace, what it can do in your life, in my life, in the life of a man who believes in God and his son, Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Seven of them, seven headlines. Number one, dominion, dominion. This grace gives and brings dominion. And we've seen there that by faith, these heroes of faith, even in the Old Testament, enjoyed dominion by faith in God and his word. And they subdued kingdoms. Number two, righteousness. Rot, walk, being right with God. Number three, promises. Obtaining promises of God. Fulfilling those dreams, those desires, those wishes. Removing them from wish. <laughs> those desires to fulfillment. Fulfilling desires. It could be money, degree, whatever, promotions, whatever that is in line 
with God's promise. It is the promise, the promises of God. Number four, escaping danger. Danger. The world is very dangerous. And you need God's grace to escape danger. I told you my experience how I was on the road. And when I passed through the road, a few minutes after I saw some people and they asked me, where did you come from? I said, I just continued on this road. They said, no, 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 I'm Robert just struck there. <laughs> ah, but God's grace carried me through. And if I remember the testimony of a brother, he drove through a police checkpoint because it was late evening. He said he didn't see it. So he drove, he didn't know they put barrier. So he hit the barrier and then thought, ah, maybe these are uh, armed robbers on the road. So he continued. The police jumped into their van and they chased him. He just drove because it was late. And he didn't want to save him, so he didn't, he didn't even check his car to know whether the car was still able to move. He just drove because he thought he was in danger. The police chased him, and then they began to open fire on this man. They opened fire, and he was going. He just didn't even know. Their gun refused to sound, to, 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 to fire. Till he got to the next police checkpoint. This time, he just by himself, they stopped him and he parked and he told them uh, his tire, he needs to check his car and all that. The other policemen arrived, caught God, and one already fired at him. And he was like, what have I done? But the God still refused to fire. They said they came to test his power. They have been shooting at him and the gun refused to fire. And they turned the gun and fired up and the gun went, wow. They pointed at him and he told them, I am a pastor. I'm not testing power with you. And the other police intervened. He said, they came to see who he is. Shout with me, grace, escape danger. He didn't know and God protected him. We still talk till today. So I'm not telling you ESA. I'm telling you about somebody I know physically. <laughs> Glory be to God. Number five, strength, ability to walk and perform. Like Paul said in Philippians chapter four, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Number six, victory in battle, all battles of life. Don't keep quiet. Make up your mind because there is grace for you to win every battle of life. Whatever is fighting you, fighting your marriage, fighting your children, fighting your, 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 your business, fighting your career. Poverty is one battle you must win in your life. And win not just for yourself, but for generations that will come after you. Battles of life. Victory in battle. All battles of life. Number seven, victory over enemies. Put enemies to flight, whatever enemy is surrounding you, they must flee in the name of Jesus. Beloved, just as I said, I said, these are just few examples of the amazing possibilities in God, of these greats. So all the above and much more are for you. However, the choice is yours. The choice is yours. Whatever you permit in your life leaves with you. Whatever you ask to go will go. You remember the centurion said to Jesus, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but I am a man under authority. I said to this one, go, and he goes. I said to this one, come, and he comes. Ha, Jesus, if you say to anything, go, it will go. If you say to anything, come, I know it will come. And the same Jesus has done for you. Hallelujah. Oh, that name that is above all names. I pray that we will come to the reality of the name of Jesus, the reality of the name of Jesus, and we will make that name a reality in our lives. The grace of God is limitless. So all these are available to you. Are, they are available to me. 
what you enjoy, what I enjoy in life is a choice. How we apply this grace, we have said so. But I want to challenge you today that you can affect what affects you. Hear me? You can affect what affects you. Now, right now, right now. And some of, uh, like some of the contributors last week said, faith is now. That's what Hebrews chapter 11 says as well. Now faith is. You can affect what affects you now, brothers and sisters. It is your choice. So look at your life. Look at your circumstance now, right now. And desire and be determined to make a change and cause this great grace to happen for you in Jesus' name. We also then look at the five W's of how to bring about the manifestation of these possibilities. The five W's of how to bring about these possibilities in our lives. That's what we want to look deeper now. We'll not be able to cover the whole five. We'll take what we can take. I believe we'll take two today and we'll look at the other three. But just by listing them, number one of these possibilities is or of the how. How? We are now looking at the how of bringing these grace, these possibilities to manifestation in our lives. The five W's of how to bring about these amazing possibilities in your own life, in my life. Number one is will. Number two is wisdom. Number three is waiting. Number four is work. Number five is worship. I go through it again. Number one, will. Number two, wisdom. Number three, waiting. Number four, work. Number five, worship. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's start looking at will. Will, we look at three aspects of will. A, B, C. A, Determined to live for God and glorify him only with your life. Determined to live for God and glorify God with your life. That's uh, A. You see, this is really the will of God. <laughs> Many people are seeking the will of God, looking for the will of God. The will of God starts by you determining to live for God and glorifying God with your life. Look at a few scriptures. But immediately Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 speaks to that. Just note that. We'll come back to that. A, determined to live for God and glorify God with your life. Make up your mind that this life, it is God and God only you will glorify. B, determined to know this will of God, that is the word of God and the promises of God for your life, determined to know it for yourself. The will of God, which is the word of God and the promises of God for your life. Not what man tells you, but what you know. You know, and you know, and you know. Glory be to God. Number three, that is C. C, determined to succeed in life and set success goals for yourself in line with the will of God that you know. You see how we live. Not just arbitrarily by the word, by the revelation. By the promises of God. See, I repeat it again. Determine. It's by determination. Will. Some people talk about willpower, but they use it for themselves. Use it for God and use it according to what God wants for your life. Determine to succeed in life. And you have to set success goals for yourself in line with number two that we talked about in line with the will of God, that is the word of God, the promises of God for your life. By this determination, you must burn the bridges. Don't look back. Don't look back. Don't look back. 
You see, the children of Israel, after they left Egypt, God told them he's taking them to the land of the, the, the promised land, the land that is flowing with milk and honey. But many times they looked back. Beloved, there will be challenges. There will be little obstacles, I call them. But with God, every mountain and hill will be made low for you. It will be made a plain land for you. Every valley shall be filled up for you to walk over. And every crooked path shall be made straight in the mighty name of Jesus. For you serve a God of all possibilities. With God, nothing is impossible but rather all things are possible with god shout that to yourself all things are possible with my god glory be to god let's look at scriptures to discuss these three points further let's look at philippians chapter 2 verse 13 which i mentioned before we'll look at a few a number of scriptures around philippians in fact i will encourage you please study philippians um, as part of this uh, teaching, study Philippians. So Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, read it with me. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. When you determine that your life is solely to glorify God. God will walk in you to do and to will. Walk in you both to will and to do. So that which God wills and puts in you. So this is what we're talking about, will. He himself will walk in you to bring it to pass for his own glory. Philippians 3, let's look at 13 and 14. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Brethren, this is Paul speaking. Oh, when it comes to grace, the operation of grace by faith, we look at Paul. Let's read it from verse 13. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I press toward the goal. Remember, you set goals, success goals, according to the will of God. So Paul said he presses on. Don't look back, burn the bridges. Forward ever, backward never, in Christ Jesus. Philippians 3, let's look at 7 and 9, 7, 7 and 9 as well. Paul said, but what things were gained to me, this I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ nine, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, living for God. Glory be to God. The same Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. And the life that I live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Be determined to live for God. Brothers and sisters, it is only people who have made this choice who are able to say, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 28, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I can give you several testimonies. When 
it looked as though everything was gone. Every hope was gone. It looks as though I was abandoned. But because I have made up my mind that this life, I will live for the glory of God. I turn around and I say, all things work together for good, for my good, because I love the Lord. And he has called me according to his good pleasure. And so in your life, in my life, in this matter, it shall turn out for my good to the glory of God. And brothers and sisters, it's always turned out that way. Oh, we can talk on and on on this. But let's move to point two. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Oh, you really need this. You need wisdom. Glory be to God. What is wisdom? The common saying is that wisdom is the right application of knowledge. Wisdom is the right application of knowledge. That's uh, easier said than done. And I ask you, okay, how do you operationalize that? That implies that you have to have knowledge, isn't it? You have to have knowledge. So how do you get knowledge? By learning, by studying, right? by learning, by studying, by practicing. Why that is good enough for the secular wisdom? When it comes to God, there is a second part that is challenged there, right. What is right then? There are many things people have done and they have learned, they have studied and they have practiced it, but is it right? For example, Politicians believe in what is called Machiavellian theory, Machiavellian ideology of politics. The end justifies the means. Does the end justify the means? And so people will kill just to achieve their political ambitions. People will sell a whole nation. They will sell even their prophetic office for their own ambitions. They would trade in even the call of God upon their lives for a position. The end justifies the means. Does the end justify the means? Does the end justify the means? In God, the answer is absolutely no. It is both the end and the means. God is interested in both the end and the means. And as we have said before, they've both got to be righteous. You cannot use unrighteous means to achieve a righteous end. It's not possible. So, you see, why this definition is good, what then is right? And in Matthew chapter 19 that we looked at, you remember verses 16 and 17, that rich man came to Jesus, he said, good teacher. And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? It's only God that is good. So when it comes to right, it's only God that determines what is righteous. So anything contrary to the will of God, anything contrary to the word of God is not right. And so the Bible makes the distinction between the wisdom of this world and the wisdom of God. I think we'll come to that when we're reading the scriptures. So right application of knowledge. Yes, it's easy to acquire knowledge. But to apply it rightly for righteousness will have to be in God and with God. So right has to be in line with God and his word. That is why we must look at wisdom in the true sense of wisdom. So true wisdom belongs to God. Wisdom belongs to God. It's only God that knows tomorrow and knows what is right today, tomorrow, all through. In God, there is no mistake. I often try to remind young ladies, 
and young men when they want to marry this aspect cry to god the beautiful girl lady you've seen may not be the one that will meet your life call tomorrow the handsome man that you see your man may not be the one who will meet your life call tomorrow and so pray to God because it's only God. Wisdom belongs to God. It's only God who knows the end from the beginning. Hallelujah. So true wisdom comes from God. Therefore, I want to add a bit more to that definition, that good definition, right application of knowledge. That wisdom is knowing the right thing, doing the right thing, that brings the right result. So there is a result that then justifies whether it was right. This is where the theory of the end justifies the means came from, but they left the means out of it. On the other hand, the other definition looks at the right application, but didn't add the end that will tell us whether that was wisdom. Glory be to God. So there are many things human beings have by their wisdom manufactured or, uh, or brought to be. But at the end, is it really wisdom? While I sympathize with people who are suffering uh, mental health, I want to encourage all of them that some of the messages that are going on about mental health are not true and they are not wisdom. All the uh, pity party and sympathy seeking, turning it on the society is not wisdom. Sometimes there are very simple things people can do to avoid some of this mental stress. For example, People that are being attacked and bullied on social media and they are going into a depression and all that. Please, would it not just be wisdom for you to simply turn off that social media for a while and face your life and face your quiet space? Just one tip, but there are many others. So like I said, it's real but you can do quite a lot to help yourself. Rather than turn to sympathy party or pity party, and then turn it on people, turn it on the whole face, you can do a lot to help yourself by just applying wisdom, removing the stress from yourself and from your life. And of course, getting the necessary help and praying to God, and my God heals all manner of depression. Glory be to God. Jesus heals depression. Cry to him. So wisdom is knowing the right thing, doing the right thing that brings the right result. So three rights, three rights must come together. Knowing right doing right so there must be the doing of that which you know you may know something and if you don't do it is useless it brings no result so knowing right doing right with the right result if you claim that you know the right thing that you have done the right thing and yet the result is not right how could you claim that was wisdom. Definitely not the wisdom of God. A number of scriptures to again look at wisdom. That wisdom comes from God. Absolutely the re reserve of the almighty God. Let's look at Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. When we talk about wisdom, one man also stands out in the scripture. And that man's name is Daniel, isn't it? Glory be to God. Daniel, Daniel. 
So let's look at Daniel chapter 1, verse 17. Daniel 1, 17. He said, as for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill, and in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Let's read it further to 20. Now, at the end of the day is when the king had said that they should be brought in. The chief of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar, verse 19. Then the king interviewed them, and among them all, none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore, they served before the king, verse 20. And in all matters of wisdom, hallelujah, and understanding about which the king examined them, he found them 10 times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all his realm. May the almighty God make you like that and even more in the name of Jesus. May the almighty God make me, make us like that. But you've got to be willing to live for God and glorify God. Same Daniel in chapter five, Daniel chapter five, verse 14. Daniel chapter five, verse 14. Nebuchadnezzar declared him. <laughs> he said, I have heard of you that the spirit of God is in you. Hallelujah. And excellent wisdom are found. In you. Glory be to God. May that be the testimony concerning you, concerning me, in Jesus' name. So wisdom belongs to God. It's God who gives wisdom. The true wisdom is by the Spirit of God. Ephesians 1.17, here Paul prayed. He said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Please read all the way to 21. Proverbs 4, 7 to 9. Proverbs 4, 7 to 9. I, I really want us to read this. It says, wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. I know we say this often, but have you made this a reality in your life? Proverbs chapter 4. Let's read from verse 7. Look at it. It says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her. Cherish her. Exalt her. And she will promote you. She will bring you honor. When you embrace her, she will place on your head an ornament of grace. Did you hear that? We're talking about how to bring about the amazing possibilities. That is the amazing possibilities of grace. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory. She will deliver to you. Wisdom is the principal thing. This is the key. Knowing the right thing, doing the right thing that brings and guarantees the right result. That's only possible by the spirit of God. How to get wisdom? If any man lacks wisdom, let him do what? Ask from God. Who gives? Let's go there and read it together. James chapter 1, verse 5. Forgive me. James chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. So in every matter, seek God's wisdom, and you will have. God will give to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. And so as we have said, wisdom is by the Spirit of God. So you pray, like Paul prayed there in Ephesians 1.17. He said that the spirit of wisdom and revelation be given to the believers of Ephesus, the Ephesians. Hello, brothers and sisters. There is limitless, amazing possibilities in God, our God. And all of us who have believed in God through Jesus Christ, have this grace available to us. We've covered the will of God. We've covered the wisdom, the will and the wisdom. We will come to waiting, walk and worship. This is where we'll round off today. As always, I would like to take one or two comments or questions or clarification. Okay, let me start my own questioning then since you don't have any question. <clears throat> If you were thinking about Bible characters, Bible characters, and you want to talk about people who enjoyed 
amazing grace of God. For you, who will be your number one, two, three? Your number one, two, three. I mean, at least that's simple thing that we can all, at least it is about you. So for you, who will be your number one, two, three? In the Bible, people in the Bible that you would say they enjoy amazing grace. Who would be your number one, two, three? Let me hear. Somebody open the line and tell me. Um, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My number one person after I have uh, read through that uh, Hebrews chapter 11, 32 to 29. The man that stood out for me was Elijah. Elijah raised the dead child of the widow of Seraphat. Elijah was hidden in the cave, running away from uh, uh, the king. Thank you. And, Thank you, Ma. Because of time, Elijah for you stood okay. out. For you. And Daniel and also Apostle Paul. Yes. So Elijah, Daniel, Apostle Paul. This is what you do. Take time and study those characters. Please take time and study them as you also walk your own journey of grace. That's why I ask for this. Uh, if I were to share my own with you, uh, so you know how this works. For me, apart from Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is number one. Amen. <laughs> so Amen. he stands out there. Okay. Yeah. He's there. He's there. He has no yeah. mix. He has um, no weight, so we don't put him in this categorization. Know, Hallelujah. Jesus Amen. Christ stands out there for me. Amen. So apart from Jesus Christ, David is one man. Joseph is another man for me. And then comes uh, Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul. Glory be to God. Okay, uh, Brother Sonny, please go ahead with your question. I'm asking, based on what we have just discussed this uh, afternoon, this morning, how would one know that what he is doing is the right thing? Maybe if you apply a particular wisdom, how would you know that that, that particular uh, application is the right thing? Okay, thank you very much for that question. So we recap again exactly what uh, we, uh, we have taught today, and that's indeed what we are saying, to know that it is the right application, that it must be in line with the word of God. The wisdom of God is revealed in the Bible, the word of God. So it must be in line with the Bible. For example, that man said, let's go there to the book of uh, Matthew, chapter 19 again, he said six, at least he counted six do not, right? Verse 18, he said to him, which ones? Jesus said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not be a false witness, honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Just for example, this is one. And you're doing things that are contrary to this and say you are achieving a result. There are some children that will discard their parents completely. They are even taught with this new age, this new age movement and all that. Oh yeah, don't, you're under your parents' tutelage. No, you have to you have your own freedom. Who is contesting freedom with you? It is normal. In fact, it's actually uh, uh, common knowledge, common sense. Let me put it that way, common sense, yeah? No, common sense isn't common. You would expect that every human being will understand that you have four dimensions of responsibility and there is no way to run away from it. Number one is responsibility to yourself. Number two is responsibility to your God. Mind you, I use the word your God, whether you choose the most high who created you or you choose whatever thing or yourself. So even the people who say they are atheists can't run away from this responsibility. So number one, responsibility to yourself. Number two, responsibility to your God. Number three, responsibility to your family. And number four, responsibility to your relationships, acquaintances, that is others. Jesus Christ put it this way. Say, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. You can't run away from this. Anyway, so here the Bible reveals six. If you went, went back to the Exodus, there are more than that. And there are other things that the Bible talks about. These are the commandments of God and the promises of God. They are all contained here in the Bible. That's one. Number two, the spirit of God will never say anything to you that is contrary to what is written and revealed in the Bible. So number two is the spirit of God guiding you, telling you to do things. And you have just said, and number three is that the result will confirm. At the end of the day, the result will confirm. So if you went, it's compliant, it's consistent with the word of God, the spirit of God has, has, has spoken that to you con, uh, in line with the word, which is converting the logos to rima, rima, and you follow it in obedience to God, you will see the result will always confirm that it is the wisdom of God. Even when it seems as though it is foolishness to man, at the end of the day, it will speak that it is the wisdom of God. And on the contrary, when it looks as though it is wisdom, full of power, at the end of the day, it will turn out to be foolishness. I, I am so tempted to, uh, you know, mention the situation that we are facing in our nation, Nigeria, now. I, I believe with all sincerity, Everyone in Nigeria was looking for a real change. And that was the mantra, change, change. But today, if we are honest with ourselves, we have not changed for the better. So because man doesn't have the power to see tomorrow. Nobody saw how the uh, international market would play out, how the oil price was going to crash. We went into recession soon after, and all manner of things happened, and culminating in the COVID-19 that happened all through year 2020 and still continuing change. So that's how we look at things as human beings. But when God is involved, he sees the end from the beginning. I hope that uh, clarifies my brother. Otherwise, you can ask again and i mean you can add or share or thank you Pastor. Uh, because this is what it is about yeah okay thank you we pray that the almighty god will guide us and give us wisdom to do the right thing that guarantees the right result um brother lucky uh, forgive me for calling you out i always like the way you put this together so i'll give you the last chance to say one thing, 30 seconds before we pray and round up. Okay, thank you, thank Pastor. You. I, I love the, the way you draw the link between the wisdom of God and the determination to succeed and set success go for yourself in line with God's way. Because if you look at the so some of the churches today, they tend to downplay so much your personal success in your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. I know I once listened to a man of God that said that, that nothing matters in your business, that what you do in your business does not matter, but it's God that matters. But what he did is that he failed to draw a link between God and your business, which you've done so well. It gives us a better understanding of our life in God and our to succeed in life. A better understanding we should be just done. Helps Christian to move forward in their lives. Thank you, my brother, for making that point. Again, um, we need to realize that there is no separate us, separate me, separate you when you're facing your business. You don't take off the spirit of God that has been given to you. So this is the thing that uh, and uh, we, we, we pray God's spirit will continue to help uh, the pe people of God who have been over the years, you know, indoctrinated by religion uh, rather than the life.
that God has given us. So this is the problem of religion rather than the life that God has given to us through Jesus Christ, revealed in his word and by the spirit of God. So I've taught us here what ministry means. Ministry is not church. Hello, hear me. Ministry is not that building, that wall that somebody builds and calls church. That place at best is a gathering uh, assembly, assembly. And then what else is done in that assembly determines what every one of us that is the only place that we worship God. The gathering center, the assembling is for a particular purpose. Yes, we may gather there and have corporate worship. We may gather there and do all the things. And indeed, there are a whole lot of things that we should do when we gather together. We've dealt with this um, in the study of abiding in Christ, if you remember. Now, but the emphasis is this whole man in Christ Jesus. There is no separate you in the office, no separate you in your family, no separate you in community, no separate you in the gathering center where we go and worship together and do other ministries and services to God, no separate you in politics. You are the same one man filled with the same one Holy Spirit. And that grace is available to you in your academics, in your career, in your prayer, in everything you do. And as we take the four, uh, the other three W's, I believe God will help us bring this together. God bless you for that point. We want to pray now because our time is completely exhausted. I want us all to uh, talk to God. But before that, please remember two things you must do this week. And we're going to follow up is that you must look at your own circumstance. What is your own circumstance? And then what is or are the promises of God concerning your life in that circumstance? I want you, therefore, to look at these seven areas that we have talked about, dominion, righteousness, promises, escaping danger, strength, victory in battle, victory over enemies, and any other aspect that, uh, that, you, that you can find in the scripture that we may not have captured here, that reflect your own circumstance. Now put down your success plan. You're going to take it on, and this week, we are going to, on Wednesday, gather again to pray and present whatever circumstance is not in line with God. And whatever is the will of God for our lives will be made manifest, will come to fulfillment. So that's your assignment. Sit down and look at your own, your own, your own, your own circumstance. What is not in line with God's will for your life? and put down what is the will of God and begin to then declare that will and set goals. You are going to do what you're going to do for the manifestation of God's will for your life. And we will continue to join our faith together and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Just tell him, Lord God Almighty, thank you. Thank you for the limitless possibilities that are in you for me. Lord, I pray that in this life, you will help me enjoy all your blessings that are meant for me. And if you're here, you're still struggling with sin. You have seen the grace for righteousness is there. Tell him, Father God, I repent of my sins. Forgive me all sins and give me the grace, the strength to overcome them all. I reject sin. I reject Satan. I reject the world. I embrace Jesus and I declare and confess with my mouth, Jesus, you are my Lord. Wash me with your precious blood. Heavenly Father, fill me with your Holy Spirit and transform my life. Thank you, Almighty God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for all this, your children, and thank you for your word that you have taught us. Lord, we return all glory to you, and we pray, Lord, that your word will continue to fill our lives 
the power in your word will change our lives, transform our lives, and Lord, your amazing grace will manifest in our lives. Thank you to you, Almighty God, be all glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The Almighty God bless you, brothers and sisters. Goodbye.